and uh, Deborah Muccio with four years of dedicated service. have a few resignations on the agenda tonight, so for all those moving on to Manchester Township, we wish you the best of luck uh, and with your future endeavors. On the agenda tonight, we do have a few, uh, a lot of new buyers, which is wonderful, and the ones that we're quite proud, quite proud of is the additional bus drivers that were going to be added to our fleet. I know there's been a challenge, we've been advertising, we are still hiring for bus drivers, and we will train you, so if you know some that's interested, please direct us to our website. A few reminders to the board, we have our board retreat on the 29th. We're going to start our meeting at 3.30, and we're going to be working with the TV house to do a training on potential updates for you. And then we'll be developing goals, board goals, to hear about school goals, and then the district. Uh, our September board meeting is the 27th. That was changed from September 20th, and our website requests that as well. We will begin our night at, at 6 o'clock. Enjoy the rest of your summer. The first day for staff is September 5th and for students, September 7th. And the district will be closed on Friday, September 1st, and Monday, September 4th, and observe it until Labor Day. Thanks so much. Actually, going to school. Yeah. And I'm going to have Mr. George, you want to come up and do your school safety report? For the board, you received a video and presentation of the NJDCA score. So if you do have um, any questions about that, feel free to direct to me or to Mr. Uh, Rosa. And the presentation will also be available on our website for the public that would like to see some of the results. The NJDCA is the graduation for, uh, proficiency assessment that's done on the site. Second half of our savings period. If you remember a couple of months ago, I reported out the first half numbers. So the second half numbers get finalized in August and it just became available. So we will talk about it quickly. So these are things that have been put place across the board in the second half. <laughs> and the system after state news is called the FFPS, and this is where they track kids in the family buildings and part of our network reporting duties. We do it twice a year in this environment. So, when the way that the report breaks out is it looks at incidents across a couple of different areas violence, vandalism, substances, weapons, kids that are burned, and the kids that are burned. So, those are investigations that we conduct for those incidents were not burned incidents. And then again, it's a safe shooting. So, the first thing I'm going to take a look at is this year, period one versus period two, just in general categories. Uh, so if you look at you know the total incidents that took place in the second half, we had 45 incidents versus 41. Now the total is a, is a total of violence, families, substitute weapons, and kids. <coughs> Alleged kids are not part of that total number, but those are just investigation documents that we brought to the So when we're talking about total incidents, Hit the next one. Um, and again, what we're looking for here are patterns and things that we want to take a look at, things that we may want to be addressing next year. Uh, so when you look at it, the number of acts of violence went up in period two versus period one. Now these are fights, these are threats, these are assaults uh, across the buildings. You'll notice that substance is actually went down one, and uh, more reports vandalism in the buildings. So again, the numbers are small. Next was looked at the total incidents this year, and just like take up this is a four year cycle going back to yeah, you check back. Yep, you got back to Yes, so if we had these four weeks, you know, I don't have that number because these are just cases. And remember, when you when you use terms like violence, violence, balance, right? You know, 
fights are not good, right? Because of all the patients are never good. In my house with my brothers, there were lots of fights. When they came forward, I don't know about the money of the fights. Maybe they're worth it. He's saying the fact. So, but yes, those are all things. And we'll look a little bit more specifically into each of the categories next week because what's surprising. So, again, looking at that four year cycle going back to full in March, uh, just to give you a sense of okay, how does each year kind of play out in regards to the years before? In regards to the total numbers of incidents, the number is high. Right? And if you look at COVID March, we didn't have the last few months of the year. So that number is still. Obviously, 2021 20, and 2122 were for different reasons and kind of creepy years. Uh, but you'll see that the number has kind of grown when you go to the, you know, the hybrid year where things were really kind of creepy to you know, moving up to the shield in 2006. Uh, so you certainly see things moving in that direction. I think uh, you know, looking at next year, we finally feel like we're starting a school year. We've got a feet firmly under us and staff ready to go. And, and we'll talk about some of the things that we're looking forward to as we go through the numbers. Uh, and then what I did was I took a look at just period two, we're comparing to period two, because the second half of the year is different. It feels different, the end of the year, everybody gets a little bit worn out, some different things start to happen at the end of the year. So using that same four year span, taking a look at the numbers in regards to uh, the second half of the year. And these are some, there are some patterns that we're seeing. And like one thing that we're seeing that is going up is the number of stuff pushing to the And that's something that we're going to be with. Um, there are, in terms of alleged number of cases, you know, you see confirmed cases is four. Actually, that number is down. But when you look at the alleged cases, we're at 21, that's the same as last year. Um, so we are looking at, and again, it's only the second half of the year, but we're investigating a and that's a good that we're doing. So, uh, but those again are just across the general categories and for the reporting period too. And then we take a little bit of a deeper look in each of the categories. So, here is a violence report, and violence is categorized in the areas of assault, fight, kidnapping, robbery, sexual contact, sexual assault, simple threat, criminal threat, and then incident report. So, obviously, you've got some pretty serious events that are going to be violence. And, and really what you're seeing front are the fault, one side of anything, is an unusual fight, unusual physical altercation, and then simple threats really kind of are the areas that you see in front of the And mostly this is taking place in the high school and middle school. Uh, we also have one in the system uh, for that kind of reason in next year. Uh, so obviously the number of fights went up. <laughs> you know, and that's those are the numbers that people. When we look at vandalism, these break out into the areas of art, computer trespass, property damage, assault, public law, theft, trespass, and again, we did a tour. And here we're talking about theft, that's something that we can see increasing. Uh, and again, uh, at high school and middle school, and then some property damage as well. So that's where we're some of the evidence. From a substance report, and again, this is probably the most concerning that I've talked about before, and we'll, you know, we've done some things to address. Uh, this breaks out into use confirmed, so that's a positive result. From a few refuses an exam, from a few in possession, sale or distribution, and instant book. And that kind of continues to bring up. And primarily high school, middle school, it's become more of a middle school issue than it has in the past. It's probably the largest area of increase. But obviously, increases at that Yes. 
And, and the great thing about our relationship with the police and having the SRO at the high school, the police are involved in it. Okay, all physical confrontations are not the same, but the police are aware of all of them. And if need be, they're involved with whatever they need. There have not been criminal situations here, but rest assured that the police are regularly and always running the issues. You know, when they will talk about that. Any other questions on that? You're certainly having this out with the middle school is something I will be doing to you know happen for next year. And again, just it's about continuing that support and holding kids accountable and, and getting kids out of support that they need. Obviously, it's not a school issue, it's a whole issue. Uh, but we're certainly uh, we're gonna work really hard to make this case. Uh, and this was done really like weapons. Again, the police are always involved. There were no threats involved. These were not brought to school with the intent of using them. But when they get discovered, because the kids start talking and somebody's got a pocket knife, or somebody forgot that they had a something in the backpack, uh, it gets recorded. The police are involved. And then harassment, intimidation, and bullying. What I did here is the slide can, uh, contains both confirmed cases and alleged cases. So, for example, 2022 23 full year numbers, four confirmed cases. Well, I'm sorry, this is period two. Uh, four confirmed, 21 alleged. Again, I think it's the, the message to our buildings and, and our new hipster reporting process. We investigate it. Somebody's having an issue. We want to know about it. We want to investigate it. And then we'll make the right determination. I think what I talk to parents about a lot is that whether or not that behavior meets the definition of harassment, intimidation, bullying, it will be addressed. And, I feel it's, uh, and certainly when it does meet that definition, then it's. it's, it's uh, but when you look at the second half cases this year versus last year, the total investigations. Uh, with, with 21, but there were more confirmed cases last year. Than Again, the numbers are kind of small. So when, when you think about it, right, we have 2,000 kids and lots of interactions every day. So certainly this is taking place and we're investing everything that we forward. But when you look at overall caseload, it is a number of simply a small uh, 3,000 kids. Uh, so again, some of the things that, and some of this goes back really to strategic planning in terms of, you know, what are students, because I think the overriding issue in our schools is we just want more kids to come And even when we went back to our strategic plan, we talked about getting student voice and involvement in the school and creating new opportunities and ways for them to connect with the group. I think that's one area that we can address. Hopefully, we're getting more kids to connect, but only we have to in these situations. Uh, making revisions to the code of conduct just in terms of aligning the consequences from the high school to the middle school so kids have an understanding of, of what it looks like. You know, we're talking about the restorative practices and, and you know that whole process that you thought we've done a trauma team school, we had training as, a, as an administrative team. That's something that the staff has been trained on and continuing to do that. And when you get to the bottom of a lot of the restorative practices, you get to the trauma board. The underlying pattern is everybody's talking about relationships with the staff. And more kids who have better relationships with more members of the staff, it's just going to lead to a, a more positive environment where you know hopefully you're dealing with fewer new issues. And we're also going to have a really straightforward uh, you know, code of conduct, and everybody's going to know what it needs to look like. And it's going to be brought up at the beginning of the year, it's very clear. So that as the year progresses, there's no surprise. This is what we talk about. And here we are now. So um, again, I think that we all feel good as an administrative team, just about really solidly having our team under as faculty, as community, school community going into this year, and hopefully, you know, finding ways to, to make some more of those connections. Because we've seen that the high school, the amazing things in our case too. And most of those opportunities were oftentimes opportunities that they brought to us for different opportunities or the evolving of the curriculum, what it looks like. So um, it certainly will be a process, but I think everybody's really looking forward to it. It's the, it really, you're going to see it reflected in the strategic plan. You're going to see it reflected in, in a lot of different areas of the school. Any questions?
really nothing new for uh, support. I just want to thank you for support for providing the J Roxy photograph to get it printed out. Good evening, everyone. My name is Stephen McDonald. I'm the executive student government president at the Microsoft and Microsoft activities and things that I've heard, what I've planned at my event since last week. Student government members and members of the football team were invited to a community service day at the University of West while the students were residing there at the Schedules will be released at the end of this week, which means students will be able to request early schedule changes August 21st and August 23rd. Freshman orientation will be August 22nd, with new times of 9 and 3 and sorry about that, 9 and 3. There will be between 9 to 11 and 9. Times will be the morning 9 to 11, and evening in the evening 3 to 5. The government will also be having their annual meeting in between the time of the session. Seniors have walked in the day, May 17th, as they're in the day, and I want to thank them for a lot of you. We great job. Is that not the audience? Chris is very proud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A couple of things tonight. Uh, first couple of things are on the agenda. You'll see we have a few shared service agreements that are in the agenda. Uh, one is to share a school psychologist uh, with one set. Uh, and wanted to share our preschool instruction code with the of The preschool instruction code will be shared one day a week, and the school psychologist will, sorry, physical therapist will be shared two days a week. Uh, we do get compensation for those days that they are not. Uh, we have two tuition contracts on the agenda as well. Uh, these are students that we are receiving from other districts. One will be attending our ERI program. And one is attending the uh, special ed program that's for our resource services. Uh, those students were here with us last year and they will be coming back this year. Uh, there are two change orders on the agenda related to our new AC project that's currently going on. Uh, both these change order orders are necessary to accommodate the new equipment that we're putting in. There is no change in contract now. This is all the charges against the allowance that is built in. So there's, there's a change in the contract. But again, these are, these are things that are going to be needed based on new equipment, stuff or things that need to move. Uh, these are on the agenda as well. And my last thing is uh, we are the school employee health benefit program through the state. Uh, they have just recently released their renewal numbers. Um, Right now, it uh, looks like New Jersey Direct 10, Direct 15, that medical plan is more than increased about 9%. Uh, New Jersey Educators Health Plan is expected to increase about 1.2%. The, R the uh, Rx plans, though, however, respectively, are expecting an increase of 0.1.5% to 16.5%. So these are, again, very large increases for now the second year in a row. Uh, again, the trend does seem to be. Uh, to migrate people that are in the direct 15, direct 10 plan into the DHP plan, uh, as evidenced by the medical renewal. Uh, one issue with that for the, the school district is as more, as more staff migrate to DHP, their health benefit contribution is typically lower because it's based on percentage of salary and percentage of premium. So, as premiums increase, it doesn't necessarily mean the contribution is lower. Uh, so one of the things we are doing again is we are requesting our experience 
uh, for our medical plan, for our, our prescription plan, to see how we perform in the past two years, to see if it's something we can shut out in the private sector. If that was something that was the direction we can go, we would obviously sit down with the association, discuss that because we would have to match all the plans that we currently have with, with whether we went out to the private plan. And we would also have to look at the discussion analysis to see what doctors are potentially not convinced of that. So that is something we would sit down with the association with. But as of now, there's already increases to the projected. They could change because I'm sure there will be people that will lobby their senators and whoever to see if they can increase our significant by comparison to what they were years ago. So we'll see what happens with that sort of thing. That's what we're doing. Sometimes we like to ask community questions and we'll get to This morning, thank football team and everyone from the high school that came yesterday. The residents were absolutely thrilled with the results, and it, the kids were really impressive. Their ability to communicate with the seniors, the patients, and technically uh, knowledgeable was great. No business, no growth. Do you want to section one of the agenda? Do section B, new business numbers one to three, and your motion? Any discussion? Mr. Keller? Yes. Mrs. Thurman? Yes. Wendler? Yes. Mrs. Georgiano? Yes. Ms. Weinstein? Yes. Ms. P. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Section C, you have a motion? Discussion? Mr. Keller? Yes. Mr. Sir, yes. Mr. Wingler? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Mr. Warrington? Yes. Mr. Keene? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Section two, administrative. Section two, number seven. Seven. And for those, of you, next slide, for those of you that are in public, uh, we did have to add two items to the agenda after the public comment uh, were run. The two items that we added are number six and number seven. They are both sidebar agreements with the MCA. Uh, the one sidebar is to as an elementary advisor position, and the second one is as a marketship advisor. Yearbook advisor, elementary yearbook advisor. Can I ask a question about this? Will there be one for each school, or will there be one person working on your book? That's an excellent uh, question. So here's the difference, and I appreciate the board giving us this flexibility uh, for the summer months. So our meeting today is August 15th. Our next meeting is in September. <coughs> the staff design has expired, and now we can have the 60 days. However, in my interview, we have staff interview. And we have Tana Hansen taking continued interviews elsewhere if we can't appoint them to the city. So giving me the flexibility to hire people to the city and be updated with the Allow them to be posted to their employer immediately. So their 60 day count is closed. Okay. Thank you. And 60 days from September 27th, which is around November 27th. Right. 
So then you're looking at someone, even though in September, we are really not going to work. Typically, interviews now, only just the general public, I know it's not a camera as well being recorded, but typically these post our positions, uh, if it's an MPEA position, you're actually going to post our position for 10 days. Then we typically have between one and three rounds of interviews. Typically, um, if it's a teaching position, we do a round one position that's at the building level. Round two would um, usually incorporate a uh, demo lesson or scenario-based questioning. And then round three would be myself. And typically, depending on the position, I would invite one of the directors to be part of, or sometimes uh, a civil rights assistant with me, just so that way there's another uh, perspective on those interviews. All of our interviews have questions, they are scored or calibrated, we are in discussion. And typically, at the building level, when they do their interviews, depending on how many applicants they have, they will send up usually two uh, candidates up to me, so that way I can do that final interview and make that determination. Sure. So, depending on, on what TBA uh, they're using, the collective bargaining agreement. So, if it's an MPEA employee, there are salary guides that we have in place that were approved for in the second year of a five year agreement. So, we use our 2324 salary guide. Um, there is no stipulation in the TBA that requires for um, people to be placed on uh, step based on the number of experience. <laughs> That the MPA and the TPA guide, while it looks like there are 20 steps, there are really 18 steps, but we have a few that are multi step, like a four, five, or a six, seven. So if we hire people based on experience, if someone comes to us with 15 years of experience, they wouldn't necessarily need to be on step 15 because they're typically coming from another school district, and we need to be able to be competitive as to what the salary is. And to put it in perspective to the general public and to the board, Step one here is not the same as step one in labor or in bread. Every um, collective bargaining agreement based on the association is part of, of the bargaining uh, process. And so when we look at the number, the percentage of their increases across a certain term, so typically three to five years, we're looking at a total dollar amount that is then used in the cancer guide and what happens with the, the duration of that agreement. You're very welcome. Mr. Trevor. Yes. Mr. Sterling. Yes. Mr. Winter. Yes. Mr. Giordano. Ms. Weinstein. Yes. Mr. Pugh. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Personnel numbers 1 through 65 to get a roll question. So um, there's a few different scenarios. So I'll start with certified staff. So there are times where employees have multiple certifications, and I'll give you an example. You can have elementary certification. Um, depending on when they got their cert, they can have a K-6 cert or a K-8 cert, which gives them different flexibilities in the content area that they can use. We also have two different special education certifications that we utilize depending on when they receive their certification. We have teacher of the handicap, which gives them the flexibility of teaching any content area, any grade level across three to the 12th grade. So depending on school certification, they may request a change, there might be a need for us to use them. And those are typically conversations with a voluntary transfer. In these scenarios, we move them, especially when it comes to the area of special education, when we move programs to different schools, and I'll give you an example. We previously had multiple disabled classroom at Whiting Elementary School. Um, then now we're moving that empty classroom over to empty yeah, so there are there could be powerful professionals that want to remain in the building that they are. There are some that want to move to the program to stay with the students. Um, the other thing is that as students move in or students are classified, the needs of the special education department uh, change. So, for instance, with paraprofessionals, there are several different scenarios for our students. You could have a student in the IEP that has access to a paraprofessional, which means that our paraprofessional system would be available within the classroom setting. 
also have them where it's just the one to one para, two to one para, three to one. So mm -hmm. the advantage that Cambridge does is they, they start very early on in looking at projections for special education, but as students move out, if the, the student had a one to one para professional and they move out of district, that one to one para is no longer needed in that classroom. So depending on what happens with vacancies, retirements, resignations, um, this is the callus that goes into her program eventually over a regional day. So that, that's also contributed to some of the shuffling of staff members to be able to meet the needs of all the students by evening. So everybody that doesn't have to take it. It depends on the scenario. So I'll give you a scenario of a one to one. If, if the child has a one to one, they move out of district. And the paraprofessional that was hired to take one to one, if the student's not there, we would just we would be fiscally responsible to keep them within that classroom or within that school when we know that there's a need for them. Also, with vacancies and certified staff, that would also change things because as we have people retiring and resigning, if they did have that teacher with a handicap, it may be even harder to replace them because that certification is no longer being offered. They now offer a post certificate that the teacher assumes with disabilities, so they have to have a certificate in a content area. And if uh, in the transfer section, they are all paraprofessionals. Uh, we get one custodian transfer, and the teacher that's transferring that program was actually run uh, last year. We took one of our programs we didn't have space for because we started it uh, later in the year, and the town had a vacant room, so we actually had a lease agreement with the regional day, but it's technically not our building. Where we operated an in district program over a recent day. And now Mrs. McCallum is going to expand it, but instead of utilizing that space, we're bringing those students back to uh, Ridgeway Elementary. You're welcome. I'd just like to say congratulations to all those retirees. Yes, Mr. Sherman, Mrs. Wendler, Georgiana, we want to be Mrs. Pease. Yes. The students personnel, can we get a vote Mr. Keller. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Mr. Cameron, yes. Mr. Fairman, yes. Mr. Wenger, Mr. Georgiana, yes. Mr. Weinstein, yes. Mr. Speed, yes. Mr. Matt. Yes. Section 3, Mr. Cameron, yes. Mr. Fairman, yes. Mr. Wenger, Mr. Georgiana, Ms. Weinstein, yes. Mr. Speed, yes. Thank <laughs> you. 